now joining us live in the studio, Game. Yeah. What's up? How are you doing? Welcome Good. back. Thank you. I feel like we're, you know, we're family now. Yeah, we almost girlfriend and boyfriend. <laughs> we are. <coughs> wow. That's good to know. Uh, <laughs> ring check, ring check, ring check. Uh, no, I do not have a ring. There you go. Um, I'm open to being friends with everyone, game, including cool. you. And, and you're now in a good spot right now, it yeah. seems. You were talking about all the positivity in your life. Yeah, everything's going good. We got a good album, good reality show, good, uh, good everything. Yeah, you were here uh, less than a year ago. You had your album, and you're already back with a new album. Yeah. That's pretty quick. Quick turnaround. Because album went number one, so I just figured I'd come right back and get it going again. You had that creative energy. Yeah. Do you have a lot of songs that are just on the back burner? That if they can't make certain <clears throat> albums, then it's easy to just put it on a new album. Um, no, because they get dated, and you know, if I set a date or some or a card that's not relevant or something anymore, then that song, you know, sort of diminishes itself, and you got to just create new. But I like new, you know. Whenever I create a new song, it just it becomes my favorite. Yeah. So this album is coming out on Tuesday. It's called Jesus Peace. Jesus Peace. Yeah. So what was the inspiration <clears throat> behind that? Uh, Jesus, duh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so you're not celebrating Hanukkah? No, nah, I don't. Uh, I don't know too much about Hanukkah. I, I grew up on on Christmas. Uh, I didn't have a tree, but it was still Christmas. Uh, to some effect, my uncle was, you know, like smoking trees in the living room. So it's same thing, you know, holiday spirit. But um, no, nah, the uh, you know, inspiration from the album was just um, just ongoing career, longevity, and just uh, where I'm at now, trying to find a balance between like music, religion, life, love, and just family, friends, and the streets. And so, you know, throw it all together and put it on one album with a lot of dope people, everybody from Kanye to Common, and 2 Chains and Rick Ross, and Meek Mill, and J. Cole, and Wheezy, and Jeezy, and Yeezy. Got all the Yeezy. You got Yeezy. all the Yeezy. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's so much fun when you have so many collaborators who are also your friends. What's it like in the studio when you get all those people together? Um, you know what, individually, it's always, uh, I've always been a fan of hip hop and uh, I'm a fan of the artists I work with also. Um, so when, you know, I like to just see how people record, you know, so, uh, Common comes in and he stands straight and he just sort of raps, but he just does this and you know what I'm saying, bob his head, but he doesn't move. Nothing else is moving, just his head, so it's dope. Um, Raekwon, I work with Raekwon and he like, he's walking in place, so he's just like walking but never going anywhere and um, it's dope, man. Just, I remember working uh, with Eminem back in the day, he writes um, in circles and he reads it in circles, so you know, that's like one of the coolest part of working with artists, just see how they record. Yeah, everyone has their own creative way of doing things, right? Yeah. How do you get into that vibe and that mode? Um, I don't really have a cool style. I think I go in there and I, I gotta be like, I, I rap out of my phone, so I'm always holding the phone like right around the mic, but the mic is right here, so it's sort of like, hold, you know, about to give your girlfriend a kiss or something. But uh, yeah, I hold the phone around there and I just read it from there and you know, maybe you swing my arm up once or twice or something and yeah. there you go. You don't get texts while you're, you're trying to record? Which, yeah. There are a lot of distractions when yeah, you have your so phone you, like that. So here it is for you rappers to read off your phone, airplane mode. <laughs> that is smart, that is yeah. easy to do. Let's talk about the religious symbols and imagery on both the album and art, a lot of the track Be titles. Careful. You can have Roman Catholic Church calling down here. You <laughs> no, know, we're fired. just sharing the love. <laughs> we're just like uh, talking about everything. Are you a religious guy? You're obviously, you, you, you're, yeah. you're having an album about, about obviously Jesus. Like, do you, have you always considered yourself a religious guy or is this um, something you've been no, more connected I, to I, lately? Uh, I grew up not really liking the church uh, too much. I just felt like um, it was, it would, it would always put me to sleep when I was a kid and uh, I never really wanted to go. But as you get older, you know, and um, you know, you find, you're trying to find the balance of life and you have family and kids and you know, you start getting blessed from here and there and good things are happening in your life. You know, you got to give thanks to something. And um, you know, I'm not like Pastor Mace. I'm not saying go to church or come to my church or wearing suits. I don't, I hate suits by the way. And, um, but at the same time, I mean, first thing that artists do when they get up on a stage and receive an award is thank Jesus. Not necessarily, you know, had they been to church, you know, lately or not, but I mean, so it's like, it's, Jesus is all around you, so why not embrace that without having to change the core of who you are as a person every day. So. We have a lot of fans in the chat room right now, Kevin. So I'm looking at the chat and uh, I got a lot of questions. One person wants to know if you could have one dream collaboration with any musical artist, if you could make it happen, who would you <clears throat> love to work with? Um, that's always going to be the same answer uh, as Amy Winehouse. I was a huge fan um, in her un just untimely demise was crazy, but um, I'm, I'm still banging Amy Winehouse every day in my car. You might see me riding down Sunset just blaring it out the Bentley um, pound sign stunt. 
and uh, that's it. Can you still do a remix maybe of her stuff? But I, there's obviously legal You know what, I, I, I try to stay away from that. I don't, I, I try to, when people pass, I just let them, their legacies, um, you know, just exist and I don't really tamper with that. I'm not into that. I just appreciate her on my own. Definitely. All right, let's go back to the chat room, Kevin. Another question, uh, Bem Tax wants to know, when did you get your big break in your career? What was the first big break you got? Uh, well, I met this, uh, this producer, um, he, you know, he wasn't really known at that time and um, nobody really heard of him and um, he hasn't really done much with his whole career, but his name was Dr. Dre and um, yeah. That guy, you know. You know. Yeah, that guy, you know, some cool guy. You <laughs> no. Were you intimidated by him? Intimidated? No, I was really shocked to meet Dr. Dre and it was like, um, it was almost had that Santa Claus effect, you know, like it's like actually seeing Santa climb down the chimney, like it, it, that was it, man. Um, meeting Dr. Dre was like uh, maybe meeting Michael Jackson or for a woman to meet Oprah or something like that. Um, Dr. Dre is the uh, dopest hip hop producer to ever live and I'm just proud to say that I was, uh, you know, a, a student at the Dr. Dre school. Finally, since we're celebrating your new album today, uh, what is that one track that, when you look back at this album, will represent what this is? Um, the title track, which is Jesus Peach, featuring um, Kanye and Common Sense. Um, it's a real dope track, high energy, um, dope beat produced by Boy Wonder, and um, yeah. Thank you.